Villa Podcast Syndicate Production. Learn Streetscape Watercolor by Jason Castro. This show is about arts and the host will share watercolor painting techniques and tips. Whether you are a beginner, want to learn more about watercolor, or have absolutely no idea about it. Learn Streetscape Watercolor by Jason Castro. Hi, I'm Jason Castor. I'm on Franklin Street right now in Adelaide. It's 9 degrees Celsius and it's chilly. This is a general post office building of South Australia. This is what I'm going to paint and I will show you how I do it right now. These are the things you need. Watercolor paper, scrap paper, watercolor and palette, a jar of water, masking tape, spray bottle, pencil for sketching, cloth, tissue paper, and brushes. Before I draw and paint, I would like to share how I normally take a picture for painting. First, identify your main subject. It could be a building, boats, or vehicles. Your choice. Once this is done, look for a good perspective view. Now, as you can see on the screen, there are two different perspective views of the same building A and B. Let's take building A as our main subject. And the two red dots here represent where you stand to take the picture, and therefore, your painting. However, if you look at the bottom, I have prepared the man's eye view of both perspectives. And you should be able to see a huge difference. It is like the general rule of thirds. This is because it tends to draw the audience's eyes into the picture and places with an emphasis on your main subject. Just like the one on the right, or you can call it asymmetrical. Plus, it appears to be more appealing that way. Another key element in drawing is to identify horizon line and vanishing point. The horizon line should run across your painting, representing the viewer's or painter's eye level. Next, a vanishing point is the spot on the horizon line to which all lines on the image meet. This is what helps painters to create 3D drawings. Next, we have to talk about light, shades, and shadows. These are crucial as they give your paintings depth and life. Besides that, when you do streetscaping, there is definitely a light source somewhere. And you should be able to see light, shade, and shadow areas. On this example, we have a light source on the top left corner of our main subject, a cube much like a building. From here, we can identify the light areas here and shade on the other side, which do not have much light reflected on it. Lastly, the shadow of the building. The moment we added the shade and shadow here, we can see its depth. For beginners, I suggest that you imagine all picture in a 3D and not a flat image. Now, Let's try to identify light, shade, and shadow areas on the picture. With the light source on the top left, these yellow highlighted areas are the light areas, while the gray ones are the shaded areas. If you are finding it hard to identify shades, just remember they are normally situated opposite to the light source. Hope this helps. On the other hand, Dark navy areas are the shadows. Now, the picture was all good and it applies a rule of third, but it lacks actions. Watercolor painting is all about telling a story or else it is merely a plain picture. 
So what I want to tell here is a busy intersection, heavy traffic in Adelaide, and with people scurrying across in an afternoon big car like so. Now, let's start sketching. I always start with the horizon line and vanishing point, then adding people and secondary subjects. For this helps me to have a scale for reference. Next, I will move on to my main subject, foreground and background. Lastly, more people, cars, light, poles, and birds. You don't have to be too detailed. Try to capture shapes and position of buildings. This should be suffice. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now, back to the show. These are the brushes I normally use. Flat brush, big mop brush, medium mop brush, round brush, and Chinese brush. Now, let's look at colors before I start the paint. This is how I arrange my colors and palette. I would like to segregate them into three types. There are warm, neutral, and cool colors. You may refer to a rainbow or color wheel to arrange your color palette accordingly. Let's paint. Make sure you incline your painting board to allow water to flow downwards. Start with wetting all sky area using flat brush with clear water. Then paint the sky. Manually maneuver painting to allow watercolors to flow outwards. This helps to create natural and soft look sky. Then move on with the main subject, foreground, and then background. These are the first layer.
here, I use a great mixture of warm and cool color. It is important to know you got the right mixture of color that you want by seeing it in your mind's eye. Of course, we are not perfect. We do make mistakes here and there. Should that happen, accept and embrace them, then move on. After all, this is art. Now, on the second layer, I worked on some details like windows, cars, and shadows.
like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now. Lastly, I welcome people, birds, light poles, fine details and background, and enhancing all shadows. So there you go. This is the final result of the painting I just did. And on my right, 
is another painting of the same building from a different view I did three months ago. As you can see, the two paintings share the same brush strokes, but they have different mood and atmosphere. So I encourage you to play around with different mixes of colors to create different moods. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and find it informative. So now, I encourage you to start picking up all the necessary tools and get things started. There is one thing I would like to emphasize when you paint. Do always enjoy the process and put aside those imperfections. Please follow, like, and share my Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube accounts. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe so you're notified when a new episode is posted in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or via RSS. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, rate and review this podcast and share it with your friends. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. And if you want to know more, check out www.guerillapodcast.com.au or guerillapodcast.com.ph A Guerilla Podcast Syndicate Production